Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Digital Combat Simulator A10C. This is a game by Eagle Dynamics and uh, it's very complex, very interesting. Uh, I enjoy it a lot so far, but I haven't really had a chance to completely familiarize myself with the thousands of different settings here. So uh, let's start off by, let me just tell you what I'm using here. Um, I've got a Logitech G940 uh, joystick throttle rudder pedals and you can see them move here um, and you know that provides uh, separated uh, you know throttles uh, for each there and uh, left and right engines and yeah, the other thing is this Track IR face tracking software, which clips onto your headset and lets you look at whatever you'd like. Uh, you can look at the engines, look at that plane over there, dudes in jeeps, whatever you feel like. But mostly it's useful for looking around the cockpit because you have all of these panels that you have to know and be very familiar with, which I'm not. But, let's get started with the startup procedure. So, first thing first, you turn on battery power, and then your inverter on, and uh, go ahead and close the canopy. Alright. So then we do an APU start. We can go ahead and open the fuel valves while we're at it. Boost pumps for the fuel tanks in the left and right fuselage and wing. And uh, from there, you go over here and you turn on APU Generate Power. And that, that just allows the, well, I shouldn't have done that so quickly, because the APU is still, you know, getting, getting, its, uh, getting situated there. You're supposed to wait and, and watch it down here to make sure it warms up right. But I skipped it. So there it goes. And you can go ahead and turn on your AC Gen Power. And that just is generating powers off the actual engines which aren't started yet. So uh, now there's a few safety checks you're supposed to do here. Uh, there is a uh, well. You got to check your fuel. Supposed to, there's supposed to be a check to check your all of your signals, but I seem to have lost it somewhere, so we're just going to trust that all the signals are working, which I know they are, but still it's good to do it every time, if you remember where that button is. Uh, so the fuel's working, the gauge went down, you got to turn on our oxygen supply, and uh, yeah, then we hit this button to test that, and the master caution should pop up as soon as the test button says we're low. Yeah, that's good. If you're flying too high, uh, you need oxygen. That game's that picky. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our left engine. So that should start rolling up. Let's see if we can take a look. Yep, it's starting to spin up. And there it goes. And, okay. So, uh, you can watch the engine RPMs increase. Uh, somewhere around there. And let's go ahead and start the right engine. So we gotta turn on the radar altimeter. And that go on? Oh well. Probably nothing. Uh so let's see. Boom boom. Turning on the CDU. It's funny it didn't stay on. Oh, there it goes. It's just start starting up. Okay, so then we turn on the CICU and we put the IFCC, IFFCC into test mode. Okay, and then it asks if we want to engage a pre-flight bit test. So we say yes, and it starts that. Great. So let's go ahead and turn our MFCIDs on daytime so um, 
and our radios need to be on. So it's that one, this one, and this one. Okay. And that's for phoning into ATC and such. Uh, but I'm actually going to skip that because perhaps breaks my ability to do that. So, um, so that's still loading and. Pull up! Yeah. Pull up! Yeah, it's doing our tests. There. Altitude! Oh, altitude! So let's go ahead and tell it to load all data. So now we should have some steer points that should load up. I guess we have to wait for, yeah, let's get out of here, so. That's it. And we'll change our, this isn't part of the startup, I'm just doing this for later. It has to do with the way you release bombs. Um, and now we can left click on this one again, and boom. So now we have our traditional HUD track display up here. And we, can we scroll through our, yeah. So I'm using a HOTAS to, scroll through our waypoints here. So it's loaded our waypoints. Okay, so now it's it's definitely loading our stuff here. And we should see asterisks when it uh, finishes. So I just made it reset. It must have been done. So, so yeah, it won't let me yet. Okay. So, um... We can take this lull in the action to engage our countermeasure systems. That goes to standby, flip all these switches on. Um, these are our flares, chafe, etc. Oh, no, data. Okay. Let's see. There we go. So now we've initiated the TAD. And, uh, good. We're looking great. We're looking uh, ready, for, almost ready for takeoff here. So, okay, what, uh, what's left is to set takeoff trim, uh, flaps are up, um, stability augmentators, turn off anti-skid, turn on nose wheel steering, and wheel brakes, yeah wheel brakes have to go off. Are they're already off. Okay. I think we're good. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and give it a shot. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not actually following the procedure here for takeoff. I'm just gonna roll out there. You would never do that normally. Okay, so now we throttle up. And I'm just starting with a light taxi here. Already going a little too fast, so. Lighten up on the throttle. So there's the runway. I'm just gonna. Okay, now we throttle up. Gotta try to stay very centered. Uh, you can use the rudder after a certain point. It's important not to take off too deeply, uh, only at most 15 degrees because you will hit the back of your aircraft on the uh, ground as you take off. So, yeah, this uh, track IR thing is really neat. 
for a second. I thought they'd be close to canopy. So, let's see. Altitude, altitude. Yeah, yeah. Now I have my total velocity vector. That little bird right in the center of my HUD tells me exactly where my plane will end up if I continue on my current course. So, uh, Because YouTube only lets me have a 15 minute video, I'm going to uh, just land the plane immediately. So let me turn out to the sea and get a little height and speed and then come in for a land. And now the game supports uh, ILS. Yeah, let me see if I can actually use this. Um, there's a... Okay, just really screwed things up. Yeah, so... That was the wrong button. <laughs> Okay. Well, good thing we're within visual range of the aircraft, so... Okay, there we go. We got things back down. Uh, let's see. Ideally, you use rudder and stick input to try to maintain a level turn. So you don't really want to change your velocity, your height all the time. Only, only when you want to change your height should your height be changed. Okay, I got my navigation there. How, how wonderful. Okay, as you see, I've deviated from the flight plan another thing you shouldn't do. I'm full of helpful hints on what not to do today. So I just changed my flaps down, increases my drag, lowers my airspeed. Um, Okay, let's see if we can do this. This is what they call in the aviation business a terrible approach. Uh, generally, you want everything about landings to be incredibly smooth and uh, not problematic. Also, I never lifted my gear up. Big problem there. That, that's, that's just terrible. Okay, but as you can see, I'm coming in at an angle and way too quickly coming down. Um, Angle of attack indicator is telling me I need to pull up. Uh, altitude, altitude. There's the baddie. So I'm not going to ignore them all and let's see what happens. Um, so I'm lucky I have that total velocity vector because it tells me exactly where I'm going to crash. Coming to a rest. Uh, maybe. Yeah, air speed's down at about 90, the nose wheel, the brakes uh, you know, will kick in. I should have dropped pretty quickly there. Right at the end of the runway. There we go. Didn't even run into those things. Had to pull the emergency brake, but. Okay. And let's see the damage here. Uh, you notice I have the air brakes all the way out. And uh, so we can get the external view and take a look. And we 
check this flat. 